Hi, this is Rabbi Steve Denker again from Temple Emmanuel. Thank you for tuning in and for watching our YouTube. This week's Torah portion is Vayishlach, and it contains two of the Bible's most uh, interesting stories. At the onset of the parsha, Yaakov, Jacob, is sending Vayishlach, he's sending a delegation ahead to his brother Esau as he is entering back into the land of Israel and sending ahead gifts, wave after wave of rather extraordinary and expensive gifts. And as we understand that, it is to appease Esau so that he doesn't have a war with Esau when he comes back into the land of Israel. Esau and Jacob never become friends. They never have any warmth between them, at least as far as we can see in the Torah. And of course, the rabbis use Esau as the paradigm for Rome and later as the code word for Christianity, where there is an understanding of relationship that we're brothers on some level, cousins perhaps, but no warmth of relationship at all. On the other hand, towards the middle of the Pasha, we see the story that's known as the Rape of Dina. Dina was Jacob's only daughter, not very much mentioned in the Tanakh, but she's in this week's Torah portion. And she is associating with the people of Shechem. She's associating with the people of Nablus, which today is called Nablus, and she has sexual relations with the sons. It is apparent in the Bible that it may not have been totally her choice, although there are those who argue that she was simply playing around. But most of us understand it as a forced sexual situation and a rape. The brothers, her brothers, Jacob's sons, initially say to the Shemites that if they become part of the Hebrew people and get themselves circumcised, that they will live together as brothers. But after the Shemites do get themselves circumcised, Jacob's sons attack them viciously uh, and defeat them. Jacob is not happy about this outcome and is concerned about how is he going to live with his neighbors. Most people look at this as two different and unrelated Bible stories. But the Raibal thinks that they are perhaps related, that both stories talk about how we relate to people who are somewhat the other. In the case of the estrangement of actual brothers, twin brothers, Jacob and Esau, there is an attempt to reconcile and at least to live peaceably side by side. With the Shemites, there seems to be a deeper rejection, not just because of the sexual violation of their sister, but because even when the Shemites show some sign of wanting to live peaceably with the Hebrews, the Hebrews ultimately reject them. And there is a problem with the people of Shechem, with the people of Nablus, for the rest of our history. This is a Torah portion that causes us to think very deeply about how we relate to people whom we think of as the other, whether it's how we relate to people in different movements in our own Jewish community, whether it's how the state of Israel needs to learn to work together peaceably with those others in the living in the Middle East who want to work peaceably with us, and granted, that's not everybody and also the question of how we, as Americans and as American Jews, need to think about how we and whether we as a nation welcome the stranger at this very, very difficult time in global affairs. So it's a fascinating portion. By Yishlach, Jacob sends his emissaries to his brother, reaches some kind of tacit peace, the relationship with Shemites turns out to be impossible and also representative of a challenge that we face on many levels in our own day and in our own time. Shabbat Shalom.